Thanks for joining us at I Can Make Shoes. Today I'm going to show you how to make a pattern for a classic zip-up ankle boot. Okay, so for the um, zip-up ankle boot, to do the pattern we're going to need some paper, some masking tape, a pencil and eraser, a craft knife and a pair of scissors. And of course we're also going to need our last of choice, um, pre-taped up. Now what I've done here is I've actually attached some paper onto the last just to give us a little bit of extra height to do the boot onto. Now as you can see I've chosen a mid-heeled um, last in order to get that nice heel height that I want on there. So what we're going to do is we're going to start by drawing our design onto the last uh, and then we'll cut it out to create the pattern. So first things first, I want to get the height correct, but because we're in a bit of a slant, if I were to get that straight, it might not be straight once I hold it up. So what I like to do is just prop up the back of the heel, something like that, and that way when I'm folding this top line, I can get it nice and straight. And I think something around about there seems like a good height to start with. Okay, so once I've done that, I'm now going to draw on the design and where I'd like the zip to go. Okay, so once you've drawn those lines in, um, you can start to cut out. Now before we do that, I just want to explain a little bit to you. I've got a seam all the way down the front section here and I've drawn a line across here to create a front piece so that we don't have that seam all the way down. So we do need to have a front seam from this point up and the same at the back. So what that means is that we're actually going to replicate this side section onto the other side and attach them through seams on the front and back. The front section will then overlap that area. Okay, so once you're happy with that, you can go ahead and cut it out. So once you've cut all those lines, you can now peel this off and start to place it onto the paper. I've also, as you can see here, added the line for the zip all the way down, but I've just done a little mark across here. The zip actually only wants to come to this point. This point down is a small seam, and the reason for that is because we don't want to last the zip all the way under the shoe because it'll just become quite bulky. So having this seam in here will keep it all nice and secure without having to have the zip go all the way down. Okay, so we can start peeling now and I'll start with the front section here. Okay, I've removed the front section now and I'm just going to place that down onto a piece of paper. Now it's quite important to make sure that the top line is nice and straight and you can see it's distorted the rest of the shape there. What I'm going to do is pull it straight down in the middle and just spread the weight of these pleats on either side so that we don't have one huge pleat on either side but more that we've got a few small ones spread evenly. And then at this very tip here, you might find that it's a little bit difficult to put down. And in that case, you'll just take the scissors and put a few snips in there, like that. Okay. Alright, so I'm just going to put that piece to the side for the time being, and we'll start working on the rest. Now, what we do need to do here is just cut down the zip area there. So I'll just do that with a pair of scissors and also with the knife. Okay. So 
we'll put this piece down first. Just like that. And then we'll place the other piece beside it. Now that we've got all of our pieces flat, we can start to add some allowances. Okay, so before we start drawing in our allowances, just to make life a little bit easier, I sometimes like to take a bit of masking tape and just tape down these edges so that they're not moving around while we're trying to draw our allowances on. It's important that you can still see your lines through the tape as well. This will just make the whole piece a little bit more secure as well for when we're making the other side of the boot. Alright, so let's start by adding in our seam allowance. Now, as you can see at these two points here, this is where our side seam was. So what I'm going to do at that point is I'm just going to add in a 5mm seam allowance just up to that point and that's the point where the zip ends. Now this area here is our zip but we need to make sure that there's enough space to actually fit the zip inside. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to draw a line 5mm onto the inside of the pattern and that's what's going to give us space for our zip to fit in. So I'll just draw the outline first so that we can see where our piece starts and I'm going to draw a 5mm line on the inside of that. So this area now becomes a folding allowance so that we've got a nice neat folded edge um, on the inside of the zip. So I'm going to put an FA in there and 5mm so we know that that's a 5mm folding allowance. And here I'm just going to put seam 5mm so that we know that that's a 5mm seam allowance. I'm just going to repeat that onto the other side now. Okay, so we've accounted for the zip and the seam there now. What we'd like to do now is we'd like to put a 5mm folding allowance on the top line of the boot as well. So I'm going to draw on that top line there that we had for the original pattern. And the 5mm is going to want to come right up from the top, oops, from that point there. So we can just remove that line. And make sure that we've got an even fold in there like that. And we'll do the same thing on the other side. That's our original line and our folded top line there. Okay, so we'll label that FA for folding allowance as well. And with our back seam here and our front seam here, we're gonna wanna add a five mil allowance so that you can stitch the two sides together. So again, we'll follow that original shape of the pattern and we'll add 5mm seam allowance to that point. I'm 
Okay, so on this point here, I've brought that right down to where the masking tape ends. And at this point, I'm going to actually add in a 25 mil approximately lasting allowance. So I'll bring that right down to about there and the same at this point and just meet the two up like that. So that is our lasting allowance. And that's approximately 25 mil. All right, so the front piece is slightly different. At this curve here is where we put that front area. So we're going to need to put an underlay here. So I'm going to draw in another 5 mil and I'm going to label that underlay and that's 5 mil. We call that an underlay because the front section is going to sit on top of that. So at this point here we can also add in our 25 mil lasting allowance. So I'll bring that down and same there. And just make sure that you're following the line of the pattern. Okay. Alright, so at this point we can now cut out these pieces. Alright, so I've cut out all of the pieces now and I've also drawn on the allowances which I've simply copied from the outside of this pattern onto this one, just so that you can see where everything is. Remembering that we've got a folding allowance at the top line here and a folding allowance at the top line here. We've got two seam allowances here which will join, two seam allowances at the back that will join. And then you've got your allowances here for your zip as well. Now, just to explain the underlay section here, we have our toe section which will join at the front like that. And this is our nice folded edge here. Our notches are on the same side, saying that this is the inside of the shoe. And that will connect there, and then that one will connect in there like that. So they are now all the pieces. Just as one final thought for this pattern, to make the lining a little bit more simplified, you can actually remove these two pieces for the lining and simply use this piece twice. So that way when you're ready to open and close your zip, you can just cut a slit in the side of the lining instead of stitching all the seams and folding everything on that piece as well. So that is now the pattern for a zip boot. Thanks for watching. For more videos, subscribe to our I Can Make Shoes YouTube channel.